would never. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Good timing. Good timing. As soon as we go live, it just says, I would never. All right. <laughs> Welcome to oh. the, uh, the the next episode of Owlbear Soup, where it's the one after the last one, where we... Uh, right. Gave away, we gave away all our secrets last one, so I don't even know what we're going to we talk did. about now. Now everybody right. knows how to make the owlbear soup. You know how to make so, it. You know what's in it. You know all, all the special ingredients. Yeah. You just, know all uh, the secret ingredients. Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, but there, there is a movement, and I'm. I, I think I agree with this movement. I think. Um, okay. I think soap. I, I think soup needs needs toast. Oh. Oh, right. I think soup is more enjoyable with a nice crunchy piece of bread cuz cuz I mean, you know, it could be it could be a uh, a uh, uh, garlic bread toast, mm -hmm. right? You know, you don't you don't eat non-garlic bread toast. So I think maybe a little garlic bread toast oh. or well, now I want non-garlic <laughs> bread. Like so <laughs> I like non. Right. So um... <laughs> uh, I like non. We could yeah. put non in it. I love non. Oh my gosh, I'm I'm a wonderful child, and I get cheese filled naan every single time. Just just give me it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I love the cheese filled naan. It's All great. Right. <laughs> well, uh, everybody, welcome to another episode of Owl Bear Soup, where we do a little bit of this and we talk about games. Uh, I am uh, one of one of one of the chefs today. My name is Justin, uh, and I'm the other chef. My name is Rich. <laughs> Yeah. I'm so excited so, uh, for today. We got a ton of stuff to talk about. We got amazing guests. Uh, yeah, gosh, <laughs> it's gonna be great. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I, I. So yeah, so so I'm super excited about my my guest specifically for for reasons we will discuss soon. But I think uh, she will quickly become one of the 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 fan favorites of of this show at least for reasons. For reasons, <laughs> <laughs> I'm intrigued. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, uh, so our Pathfinder Two game ended yesterday. Oh, right. It was the right. final episode of us playing Pathfinder Two. And uh, oh, oh man, the caption says, "Rich, you have amazing gas." <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's true. Let's just go with yes and <laughs> leave it there. <laughs> Uh, all right, so the uh, uh, the the end of our Pathfinder game. Uh, my character had my prime character had died dead last week, but I brought I brought in I brought in not one but two characters. Uh, That's right. And they were the I was brothers, excited by that. Ja <laughs> right, they're the brothers Jasper and Dale. Uh, Jasper is a dwarven ranger who has a uh, animal companion who happens to be his brother Dale. His brother Dale is a dwarf uh, who can only turn into bears. And right. he turns into a bear. So uh, Jasper <laughs> and his brother Dale were ready for uh, for some rumbling. Um, oh my god! Yeah, it was <laughs> it was ridiculous. I don't know why it people was... let me play games. <laughs> it was so cool seeing them because they they came into being when I was asked to name some of my specific like super heroic agents, and uh, and I was like, uh, their names are uh, Jasper and, and Dell. Sure, cool. Um, they're they're two dwarves, and suddenly they were uh, they had great accents. They were gig workers. They worked all over town, um, <laughs> and were also like my yeah. super like operatives that would go spy on people for me. <laughs> it was great. They they. they... <laughs> They were a couple of amazing characters. I, I love them so much. Yeah. Um, and so I decided to bring them to life and kill one of them. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. J Jasper, unfortunately, died at the end of the, the uh, campaign. Also yeah. dying at the end of the campaign was our yeah. uh, our prime character. The character the story was around was, was, was <laughs> Dorius. Yeah. Um, I decided to play a, a senatorial hopeful, like this country noble who came in to the chaos going on in uh, in the Talden Empire. And it was, uh, yeah, it was very strange being in that role. I did not actually expect to, we're, we're, you know, the whole second book is you go take over this house and you pretend to be, you know, a bunch of country nobles yourselves. And you, Dorius, you're going to be the one in charge and i was all the entire time like please no like, <laughs> please, <laughs> please let anyone else be in charge <laughs> right so it was kind of a, a fun way to to play a character um yeah, yeah. You, you 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 were you were the sacrificial lamb at the end you you had oh to be gosh, you had to be yeah. the martyr to so that the rest of the village would rise up 
and uh, be awesome. And <laughs> exactly. Um, and as long as you know all the heroes are are buried in state, you know they get you know all that sort of deal, uh, then it's great. Um, you know, uh, I don't mind character death a whole lot. I used to play, you know, back in college, the characters were, we're the fated, destined champions. We must succeed. But these days, you know, I like I like making a new character if it comes down to it. So I kind of wish yeah, we were playing exactly. again. <laughs> right? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I, I mean, yeah, now we're now we're going to have to get on the hunt for a new game to play on uh, Saturday. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, oh, my gosh. But we could we could be playing Magic. Oh, yeah. We could oh, yeah. be playing... We could be playing uh, other things. There like, are some games uh, that we could be playing. Yeah, like uh, El the new Elder, or not the new, the Elder Scrolls game from Modifius. So, uh, <laughs> Look at Modif that, diving <laughs> right in. <laughs> I know. I, I almost dove into one section of the news, and now I'm, I've am i decided that uh, I want to go into another section of the news, and so so we're going to talk a little bit about Modifius. We've been talking about, a lot about Modifius lately. They have some really great games. Uh, one of the games that they do is they, they have a game called Elder Scrolls Call uh, to Arms, which is uh, going to be releasing in May. They are, or these miniatures I'm talking about will be releasing in May. They're the uh, Dwemer uh, Centrion and Ballista, and the Dwemer Spheres sure. and Spiders. So these are the from the dwarven race, um, and they look they look really awesome. If if you're if you're yeah. a fan of, of of the game, look them up. Uh, they also also for the Elder Scrolls calls the arms game. Uh, they are releasing a uh, Dark Brotherhood bundle. So uh, you know they, it, 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 it's the Dark Brotherhood assassins from the Skyrim video game, um, yeah. and the, it's that order run by Astrid and her cohort. Um, yeah, so. I think it'll be pretty sweet. It's a uh, you know the the uh, Elder Scrolls Call to Arms Chapter Two Dark Brotherhood bundle will retail for one ten, and you'll get a fantastic okay. bunch of minis as well as a card pack, and then the um, the Dwarven uh, Centurions and Spiders. Uh, that's going to retail for about fifty six bucks. Gosh, that is so cool. I mean, as you know, as I'm leading classes with kids, Skyrim comes up so often. So I'm glad that they're making a miniatures game of it. I mean, I don't know that I'm glad for all the parents out there uh, who now have to deal with this. But like Skyrim is such an easy game to just get engrossed in and just play like it's it's definitely not a 20 yes. hour experience. It's easily 120. And, uh, and I know a lot of kids mm -hmm. really love it. Especially yeah, when you yeah, add that mod that makes the Macho Man Randy Savage dragons. That's my favorite one. <laughs> Wait, what? You Sorry, don't... I have to oh. go. So the, the dragon heads vanished. <laughs> they were replaced with the head of Ra Man <laughs> Macho Man Randy Savage. Uh, and uh, instead of oh, no. howling, uh, it's just uh, it's just him saying like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Very what do you cool. got in the news? Oh, my gosh. My biggest thing in the news, I think, is that so we've been getting a lot of information about Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, um, which we've talked about a little bit, right? This is the, the first time in in Fifth Ed, I believe, that they have decided to dive back into a campaign setting and give us more more lore about it, right? Ravnica standalone, Theros is standalone. Mm -hmm. Two Ravenloft books? It's crazy. Um and this yeah. book is is wild. Um, we got a preview of the the table of contents. Uh, Lisa Penrose from uh, the uh, from Drive Through RPG, the DMs Guild, posted that and kind of talked a little bit about them. Um, this is really cool because it's not just about Ravenloft that we know, right? Most people know Ravenloft from the Curse of Strahd campaign, and that is just mm -hmm. one of the demi planes of dread. There are many, many others, and this book is about exploring them. Um, Taking a quick look in here, what do we got? Something like 20 more domains, uh, all featuring Oof. unique, you know, characters, creatures, themes, settings. Um, they're all different, and they're the the previews that we have for those are different than Barovia in some pretty significant ways. Um, Barovia, right? The very classic, like uh, Dracula's in charge uh, for sure, but uh, but they're talking about Lamordia, one that is much more like Frankenstein. There's more of a construction oh. horror. There's uh, there's experimentation. Um, there are certainly sections of this book talking about the fact that there's going to be like body horror and things in some of these, and and Lamordia will probably be one of those. Um, grim tales of this dark society where you have to you know adapt yourself in order to survive. Um, there is an Egyptian-themed domain, uh, which I'm very curious just to see how, how that gets tied in. I mean, 
horror, of course. Yeah. Uh, I just want to know what kind of horror will be in these ruined pyramids floating through the sky. Um, and they also have Dement Lou is the other one that they have previewed. It's it's more like the Mask of the Red Death or Cinderella. So like cursed court sort of stuff. Oh, that's <laughs> um, awesome. Yeah, so so I like that they are are building these out. Each one of them is given uh, four pages or so to kind of like build what this is going to be, and that leaves you free to to have your adventures in those domains or to like run through them. There's there's a ton, um, and then as well, lots of monsters. Tips for running horror adventures: How to use the Taroka deck and the Spirit Board, uh, new lineages, dark gifts, subclasses. I mean, there's there's a ton of stuff here, so. That's awesome. I'm pretty excited. I mean, this is this is basically the update for Heroes of Horror, which was one of my favorite third ed books. Yeah, I was I was never a never a huge Ravenloft per uh, person. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed taking parts of Ravenloft and putting it into other campaigns. I think I'm going to enjoy this book. Um, yeah. And yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited for it. <laughs> I, I just saw that one of one of my wonderful students is here, which is why I'm not talking about the academy right now. So much went on this week, but spoilers. So. <laughs> Oh, okay. So, oh, Sorry. So, so, so I'm not <laughs> supposed to say that the answer to the puzzle is lion. All right. Can I can rewrite it? I've got time. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I love talking about minis. I'm a huge mini nerd. I love putting together minis. I love painting minis. I love all this stuff about minis. Uh, and what really got me into it was, of course, Warhammer. Uh, specifically Warhammer 40k. Uh, I left 40k and I went to go play Warhammer Fantasy, uh, mostly because I loved squigs. I love squigs. I love really? <laughs> goblins. I love, I love orcs. I love all this stuff. And uh, War at uh, Warhammer Fest 2021. So uh, you know that's going on right now, uh, or just wrapped up. Uh, they announced that for. Um, for the 40k they are releasing the beast naga orcs army set for uh, 40k so it's gonna have Ooh. you know a mega armor war boss it's gonna have some squigs it's gonna have uh all kinds of cool stuff and i yeah i'm just i'm very loving cool. these minis they're very i'm very tempted to, to to pick it up and go back to playing warhammer just because it's like oh man i can finally play the weird orcs that i want to play uh -huh. I'm kind of excited because I know so many people who love Warhammer, but it's I've just never gotten into it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I saw the other day that there is a, an Age of Sigmar video game coming up at the end of the month, yes. which uh, I'm going to be bugging you about. <laughs> I'm I'm so going to be playing that. I'm super excited Good. about that game. <laughs> uh, they also they they revealed a lot of things, but there's a few things that really stood out to me. Uh, mostly mostly because mini sculpts, right? Some of these sculpts are fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, this other one stood out to me is is the new um, new warband for Warhammer Underworlds, which is uh, the skirmish uh, fantasy size game. Um, okay. And this is the uh, Elethane's Soul Raid. So it's a new warband for, uh, like I said, Warhammer Underworlds. And this is going to be the first uh, Idoneth Deepkeep <laughs> warband. So that's a, mm -hmm. a, a bunch of uh, nautical underwater type type of almost almost elven type creatures that that are it's pretty fantastic they're pretty cool looking <laughs> army to, or, or a squad to be playing with yeah i love in here in this description uh that they they use the word soul craving elves i don't know what that means i'm scared yeah. that's scary <laughs> I, 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 yeah, no, I, I, I love, I love the idea of soul craving elves and their aquatic allies. Yeah, so yes. good. <laughs> Very cool. Um, well, I want an uh, eel you know me and an octopus. You want an, yep, an eel and an octopus. Are those going to yep. be in there? Those are good allies. Those are my undersea allies. Yeah, I mean, if I'm a soul craving elf, that's what I want. <laughs> that's what you would use. <laughs> okay, all right, I. I... <laughs> I'm going to move over to my happy place now, uh, which, as you well know, is Kickstarter. Um, I want to chat about two of them really quickly, uh, just to just talk about um, the ones that are catching my eye right now. Of course, the first one I want to chat about, though, is Eldritch Sands, which we will be hearing about in not too, uh, too much longer, actually, when we talk to uh, one of our uh, awesome designers for this. Uh, Eldritch Sands is this, this project... Uh, that is funding right now. They have just funded, uh, I believe it was yesterday. The campaign's going for 20 more days. And uh, and to give you a very quick preview, if you were looking for like 
sci-fi to get added to your fantasy, I feel like this is a perfect union of themes that that makes me really excited mm -hmm. to try something a little bit different in D&D. &D. Um, nice. We'll be talking about it a whole lot more uh, once uh, Florian and I get a chance to start our interview in a bit. So I will I'll leave you with that just that teaser. Um, but uh, I want to go over to another friend of ours who is running a Kickstarter campaign. Uh, this is Grim Hollow, uh, the monster grimoire. Um, this is uh, uh, from Ghostfire Gaming, and this is a company that's been running, I think this is their third Kickstarter. They all do uh, pretty darn well for this this uh, this series, and this monster book is going nuts at this point. Um, this is, uh, let's see, we have Sean Merwin, I think, is the project lead on this one. Um, Ooh. Yeah, right? I like his work. Very cool, right? Um, as well as, let's see, oh my gosh. Um, yeah, lead executive designer there for that one. Um, and, uh, and this is, uh, I was very excited and interested to find out about this. This is where uh, James Hake ended up going uh, after uh, oh. working at D&D Beyond and writing articles for there for a long time. Uh, he's now the head of fables over here. So uh, oh, wow. don't awesome. exactly know what that means, but if you could have a title in a company, head of fables is a pretty good one. So yeah. Um, I'm gonna this I'm gonna pretty, ask uh, yeah, in my next review if I can change my uh, my title to Head of Fables. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, <laughs> uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, this this one also uh, I love getting in here at these like these PDF levels just to check them out and see what the the project is about. Um, and for this one, the PDF I believe is twenty five dollars. And of course, it's it's one of these big buffet style. Kickstarter. So you've got card boxes, you've got miniatures, you've got uh, cool little like thematic items in here. So if you want to check out a huge Kickstarter that's going very well right now, uh, Grim Hollow uh, could be it. Awesome. Um, I don't spend too much time in, in, in the Kickstarter realm, but uh, there is a realm that I've started to dig into a little bit more lately, <laughs> and that's Magic the Gathering. Yeah. Um, I've, I've started playing Magic the Gathering Arena on my phone, and I just can't stop. Uh, it's so much dumb fun. <laughs> um, and uh, so anyway, so uh, Wizards of the Coast is revealing uh, the new product line for Magic the Gathering D&D &D set or new product line, the Magic for the Gathering D&D &D set. Um, and that's going to be in stores in July 23rd. I'm looking oh. I'm looking forward to this because they've already introduced quests cards. And uh, so it just seems like, you know, the perfect thing to kind of toss in here is 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 some, you know, those quest cards and make really interesting yeah uh decks that that build off these so hopefully uh that will be something i can do um right hmm. that's a thing so that i, I like in yet. hearthstone so i'm excited to see them transfer yeah. into magic i don't actually know if they do have quests already that's great <laughs> oh yeah yeah they do they and they're great oh they're so i've been out fun. of it <laughs> uh, yeah you have been out of it uh this is why mm -hmm. i've been trying to get you to play uh so anyway so uh you know of course there's gonna be your draft booster packs your regular booster packs mm -hmm. uh they will be having the uh you know of course your dnd &D forgotten realms bundle uh the bundle will have 10 packs of cards 20 foil lands 20 non-foil lands and a 20-sided countdown die um and three oversized dungeons cards uh, dungeon cards are a new and flavorful aspect of this set and uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. Of course, there's going to be your commander decks and, you know, just a pre-release pack, which uh, has like 22 packs and or it comes out 20. The sure. 20 second has six packs as well as uh, the uh, different foils and all that jazz. Like but it. we're not done. There's more Magic the Gathering news. Okay. Uh, starting May 28th, uh, in the US at least, the in-store play uh, suspension for Magic the Gathering will end. Uh, they're shooting for May 28th. They think that it is safe to start slowly bringing people back into stores as they get vaccinated to play some Magic the Gathering in person. Um, and I'm sure that there will still be like mask restrictions and all that stuff. But yeah, yeah. hey, I'm looking forward to playing, you know, seeing some people playing Magic again, helping out some of the local stores and, you know, mm -hmm. let's do it. Let's game. Right. I mean, that's a really good point. It's just game stores without magic is just it's such a huge blow to just their, you know, their revenue structures. So uh, I guess I am glad that this is coming back and they've just said, this is the date. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, still in Wizards of the Coast news, uh, a specific spell that has been called way too powerful this is, is unbelievable. making its way back in. <laughs> counter, counter spell will be legal in Magic the Gathering's modern format. Uh, with Modern Horizons 2, which is released on June 11th. 
um, yeah, I'm kind of interested on how this is going to roll out whenever we, people can start playing counter spell again. That's right. uh, that's a wild card. There was two, there was two, one two oh, mana sorry. counter spell. Mm -hmm. Boom. Done. Yeah. Going right. The, and it's any <laughs> spell the most powerful counter spell there is. Uh, I, I guess outside of Force of Will, um, I went once and covered like one of those huge tournaments in Portland. That's the one where um, you can cast it with your life force, I think, like instead of using mana. Um, and so oh, it would wow. seal a lot of like high end tournament play. You'd use all your mana super and you'd have these like free cards like, oh, I used lose three life. Fine, whatever. Um, but other than that, Counterspell is good. And it's it's cool because it's a classic, right? I, I want classic yeah. cards coming back. I want to break out some Scheherazades and some of these old like alpha cards. <laughs> mm -hmm. Beta, yeah. let's be you honest. Know, and, <laughs> it, it, right, exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty excited for that card to make a comeback. Yeah. Um, but we're not done with Wizards of the Coast because G4 TV and Wizards of the Coast are teaming up to stream D&D &D Live 2021. You heard it. G4. Yep. Right? Uh, that's, I mean, uh, the fact that, you know, G4 is coming back and they're yeah. talking about relaunches of Attack of the Show and X-Play. Uh, and now they're also diving into the D&D &D side of things. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty excited to see what G4 TV is going to be, uh, be bringing for us. I am too. I mean, they they are promising again. Like D and D Live is well known for these these huge, you know, amazing casts of characters. Um, we had talked about going to the the last one in person uh, before, you know, stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, expert DMs, lots of content, like uh, lots of people dressed up, lots of entertainments there. So it's it's a huge event. And I am curious how they're going to put that into a streaming format for everybody. But you know, they need to do this anyway. So here we are. Uh, yeah, exactly. I like that G four is doing it. Yeah, and the last thing I kind of want to touch on is uh, Wizards of the Coast is putting out a series of plushies. Uh, okay. Super excited about this. There's an adorable pink beholder. Uh, <laughs> there is a fantastic uh, displacer beast with a mouse in its mouth. What? Uh, there is a huggable, <laughs> snuggleable uh, mimic. And last but not least, there is the cutest and the best of them all. It is a little owl bear from uh you know from from Ice Icewind Dale. So it's one of the little blue ones. Um, oh wow. And I am super jazzed about these. <laughs> I like I don't that. know I why. Like that. But but I, I really I really I really enjoy them. So I'm looking forward <laughs> to seeing these in stores and, and picking up these stupid plushies that I, I really yeah. want to get the displacer beast and just turn it into a cat toy. I want to see how Marzipan deals with that. Um, <laughs> just just put some uh, yeah catnip in it, <laughs> and just set it right there. And like, let's just let's have a battle. Let's go. Yeah. Marzipan can take out a yeah, displacer I'm, beast. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, clearly, yeah. I, I'm, yeah, I'm looking easy. forward to the snowy owlbear. I I feel like I need more owlbear <laughs> yeah. stuff in my life for reasons. <laughs> That's very cool. Um, all right. Well, cool. well, did you have um, anything else before we jump on I over? I did. Last thing I had was oh, okay. actually, uh, as we're talking conventions, I'm really excited about PaizoCon. It was one of the first um, non-PAX conventions I ever went to, honestly. Um, and uh, and I'm excited that it is coming up this uh, uh, Memorial Day weekend, so 28th through, what, the 31st? Yeah, that's how weeks work. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's exciting. We talked about this a little bit. This is going to be like the big finale for organized play for the Pathfinder Adventure Card Society, which is very cool. Um, Starfinder Society is launching their year four storyline. Um, the data scourge. I don't know what that means. Um, yeah, I'm excited about it. <laughs> but, uh, but I love PaizoCon because it just gives you the intro adventures like for what's coming up and then also like finales for everything that just happened. It's such a cool event and uh, having it all online so that you can play by joining Warhorn is pretty good. I think it's, I think it's 25 to get a badge so that you can start getting in on these sessions and they run just constantly, <laughs> just all the time. Uh, there's second edition Pathfinder. There's first edition Pathfinder because we just can't stop playing it. Um, so there's a <laughs> lot of really fun stuff to check out and uh, I highly recommend it. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually. After we get off this, I'm going to dig through there and see if there's any games I can sign up for because I'd like to play <laughs> some more games. Yeah, I think so. All right. Well, let's cool. let's uh, let's jump into this. Uh, All right. So, uh, uh oh, let me make a quick adjustment. But Modifius, they they sent <laughs> us uh, yet another PDF of another mm -hmm. fantastic game. And there we go. Now we can see it. And <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I know. 
Ah, there we go. <laughs> now, now everything's working right. Um, so the interesting thing about this game, and I, I, I'll toss it out right. It's a. Uh, it's so sorry. This game is called <laughs> Five Parsecs Out. This is a sci-fi Five miniature parsecs game. from home. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, it's it's a sci-fi miniatures game that you play solo. Um, right. This is for war gamers out there, people who who do war games. Like you know, you're you're, you're gonna just instantly understand this book it's uh and and then just for people who like collecting mini miniatures or terrain this is a great way to to dive in and use those items in right. interesting ways <laughs> um yeah yeah so one of my favorite games and and i will always say this is one of my favorite games of all time is a game called mordheim mordheim was a game from uh wizards or not wizards coast the other one that starts with w uh uh, Warhammer, uh, Citadel. There we go. And <laughs> exactly, and and that game uh, was a squad-based, semi-role-playing, competitive game. Um, and one of the things that I really liked about it was each of your minis had like their own XP counter. They had their own right. powers and injuries and um, and things like that. And this is and they've brought a lot of that into this game. So there's these post battle activities, and 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 you you uh, you resolve uh, all the action that happens. So if your character died, well, or or you you get to roll on a chart to see if they're dead dead, or if they just got an injury, uh, you can do things like take your mm -hmm. uh, your money from the the adventure and buy new equipment. Um, yeah, it's in in and they even go through a cycle of how to build out these solo adventures right. and just how to play it all. it's it's fantastic i'm i'm super jazzed about this whole thing yeah i really like this because like the the theme that they start with is hey you probably have some miniatures which is true for me um although most of mine are fantasy <laughs> but uh but it's just okay you you know take those those six miniatures make a six person squad they run through character creation for each of them where your characters can be um spacefaring humans they can also be aliens or potentially robots of some kind um as you were headed out here, uh, your stranger characters can get even wilder. There's a whole bunch of different backgrounds. And they all just kind of modify your basic stats at the start. They give you slightly different loadouts. And, and then you just get out into the world. Um, I think it's, it's quick. It's very cool uh, the way they have it set up. And I like that it's tables, honestly. I mean, like you, I'm, I'm a big mm -hmm. fan of Warhammer Quest, so I love just the, like, I want this. I'm going to roll on this table and see what happens. And uh, it fits very well with, with the solo style of play that I assume that we're looking at here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another thing that they do really well, and this is this is definitely something that's done really well in war games specifically, and I think a lot of RPGs and, and tabletop mm -hmm. RPGs could could learn a little from this. And it's the way that they set up the diagrams to understand how actions in combat work, and what constitutes as cover, and and, and how to look at cover and educate cover with the rules yeah. set and all that, like little things like that, like. You know, um, we were we were playing Pathfinder two yesterday, and one of the sure. the, the issues that I have have with Pi Pathfinder two is the density of everything. Like everything <laughs> is so hard to find, and there's so many rules, and a lot of it's great, but oh, you know that that is that is one of the things, right? And, yeah. and and this book does a really good job of laying out the rules so that you understand them. So that if you have questions like, um, all right, so is this an action that has to happen or is this an action I can choose to happen or is this, mm -hmm. uh, can I react or, or how does this all work? Um, and right. they have really good diagrams and uh, it, it, it makes this game, makes this book more readable and more enjoyable for me. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. I will say I'm, I'm a war gamer, probably more than I am a RPG guy. I, uh, it's pretty close, right? Um <laughs> <laughs> but this game does a, a really good job of laying everything out um it does yeah it's it's a beautiful game it's well done i'm i'm super excited about this yeah and i i like that uh you know i if i were jumping into this i would be like well how am i going to create the other team what's going who am i fighting what you know what's what's going on here um this does a good job of setting up like what the winning conditions are for you it talks about battles it allows you to determine what deployment condition you are under just with with simple die rolls so um it is possible, you know, if you are doing a, a quest style mission on this table, um, 
it's possible that your game is like your deployment is delayed. So two of your random crew members won't start on the table at the end of each round. They might mm -hmm. drop in hopefully right yeah. uh versus something like the cutoff guard where your characters are all slow like you you don't get to be quick this round uh, you are surprised and i love those mm -hmm. kind of things because i i don't want every one of these battles to feel the same and if it is a solo play i really need those tables to give me that kind of variety i'm not ready to come up with all that stuff myself you know just decide i feel like this battle is going to be harder let's um so mm -hmm. it, it's all in here and it's really really easy for me to read um and I, with miniature games like this, don't often know what's going on. So this is pretty fantastic. It's well written. Yeah, um, they and they do uh, in, in on screen right now is the conventions of the game. I mm -hmm. I love I love books that have this uh, section so that you understand how to roll the dice, what the dice yeah. mean. Um, I I love so what they have specifically instead of using scatter dice like you might in a warhammer game you roll a d10 and wherever the, the edge of it is pointing that's the way it scatters right so uh, right. you would use scatter whenever you like throw a grenade right you, you have to see how off your your, your throw is and so you uh -huh. roll your scatter and it, it helps direct it and i'm i i love that so much it's, it's just it's very such smart. A, like right it's and it's just such a smart section as well um it, it, oh. it, it really brings it in also the inspirations uh there was i think two pages of inspirations so mm -hmm. things to watch things to read things to dig into if you're interested yeah. in the setting and see how you can you know expand upon it and yeah. uh you know bring your own flavor to it uh, it, it just it, it's just to entertain you uh, entertain yourself right so this is a one player uh -huh. game i've been i've been reading these rules and I'm yeah. very sure it would be a very easy hack to make this a two-player game. Um, it wouldn't take much at all. And I think it would be a really fun campaign to run with folks mm -hmm. where you get like four or five folks and, you know, you have like these these objective goals that you have to do each session. And yeah. it's just like, uh, you know, you, it, it's almost like a ranking thing. Like, oh, well, this week it's going to be Justin, Rich, and uh, Becky. And, and, and they're going to get together and they're going to play play in this setting and their goals are this and then you <laughs> uh -huh. recap at the end and you assign experience and you build up your characters and i i don't know i'm that, i'm in love with this style of game mm -hmm. and uh i i kind of love this game i mean you just described warhammer quest to me right there so i'm totally in i love the i don't know what i'm gonna <laughs> fight but i'm ready to fight it let's do this <laughs> roll some dice see what yeah. happens you know it's fun it's just fun exactly. it's quick you know consequences whatever it's you know <laughs> it's a battle game your characters mm -hmm. are gonna fall apart it's just the way it is um they are yeah, yeah i love great. this mm -hmm. yeah and one of the things i do want to point out also is i love the art so this is the the uh, one of the things that really ties a good book together is really good art yeah uh art that creates a feeling for the uh, the entire setting for the game uh, and, and and just for everything kind of around it, the art in this game is feels very futuristic slash cyberpunky. Uh, you know where they're using heavy brush strokes, where it's kind of hard to to uh, to, to make out faces because faces it's it's just secondary, right? But it's yeah. just it's such a a good like visual treat to go through this book. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is the see. kind of book that has it's pictures a, of fancy space weapons everywhere. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it's a me. Bondo says uh, he ne they never tried a single player dice game like this. Yeah, yep. neither have I. Um, and I've I've started building out a squad in it, and it was so far has been a really easy and enjoyable experience. Uh, I have enough knowledge about war games to go through this and look through it and see and understand like how the mechanics are going to work on the table. Yeah. Um, I don't know, Rich, have you ever played anything anything kind of like a solo, this style of game? Mm -hmm. I mean, um, solo is harder. I played Gloomhaven solo quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. uh, just because I had to get it onto the table at all. It's, I'm just going to have to do it myself. Um, and uh, and so that one, I am playing two characters trying to go through these pre-written scenarios and complete objectives. So uh, I see that. That's, that's definitely a little bit less random because, you know, we've got models are set in this specific story and things like that so i actually like the the randomizers for those things i love that this is going to give me that experience to just i don't know do do kind of whatever the dice land on <laughs> and sometimes it'll be easy and sometimes it'll be super hard and we'll see how that goes um yeah 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 
I don't know. This really calls to me as a, as a very, you know, a positive looking experience. It's just laid out. All my questions are going to be answered. I feel like I'm going to know everything I need to know to play this game. It's a good book. Yeah, I, you know, <laughs> it is, it is. Yeah. And I have, I haven't played any single player dice games like this, but I have played, um, uh, both Apocrypha and the Pathfinder adventure card game. I've played yeah. both of those solo and, um and so it is it is enjoyable to play solo games mm -hmm. um and i'll try to wrap the, wrap we'll wrap this up within the next five minutes because i know you have a guest waiting for you in the sidelines um yeah. but um when 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 i played plato's games solo um i can cheat <laughs> right right <laughs> which i mean and... which i mean you, I, I i wouldn't normally do but like occasionally, like you know, if I'm in the last round and I realize I played a card wrong last turn, I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna start over. If it's gonna no, kill no me. way. And <laughs> and I think right. and I think that for the casual experience of playing a game by yourself, I think that's perfect. Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, especially if the game is difficult, right? I mean, if it is a game where you're testing your resources, uh, Gloomhaven is one where you get these ability cards as you level up, right? And what you're supposed to do is get rid of one of your old abilities and replace it with a new one. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't realize that, and I played it for quite some time, <laughs> and I was just getting all these abilities, <laughs> and it was it was fun. It was tons of fun to have them all. Um, like always, have the right thing for the right situation. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, and then I found out you weren't supposed to do that. And I didn't decide to change how I played the game because I was having fun and I'm not beholden to anybody. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. and, and that's, and that's one of the great things about this style of game is, is it's that you can play it by yourself. And if you know what, you don't like the way it's, it's flowing, change it. Um, yeah. but, but I will say in this, in this game, there is kind of cool perks to having one of your, one of your, your 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 soldiers and they're not soldiers one of your squad um uh fall right if because that doesn't necessarily mean they're dead it just means they're out of combat right. um, sometimes they can come back and be more awesome than they were before right yeah uh, um, you know like specifically like uh, and i forget the specifics but i think there's one where you get an injury and it gives you an increase to another stat because of the injury or you mm -hmm. get bonus xp that you can use to kind of build up your stuff uh, right yeah it's, it's like you can it's come really, back with it's cyber really attack. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's, absolutely it's so good so, so yeah, uh i guess it's kind of wrapping this review out. yeah yeah uh this is uh <laughs> five parsecs from modifius um and it's a fantastic game totally worth picking up uh they have the pdf for sale on their site and you could probably order it through your friendly local gaming store I, I imagine they have a hardback version as well that you can get through through those folks yeah. and all you need is this and uh, a few d6 and a couple d10s and you're good to go right 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 gosh i'm gonna have to try that out i've got some warforged i mean that's that's close uh <laughs> yeah yeah um i well i can, I can send you some huh. terrain <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> I'll, I'll just have cat toys or, everywhere. That'll be it. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I mean, honestly, like a lot of times when we were playing Warhammer, uh, as as I was kind of growing up and everything, we would use things like shoe boxes and uh -huh. like cereal boxes and things like that to create terrain for us to work around. Right. So I yeah oh yeah it's just your imagination. Exactly. I, I will say that you know this is it's very cool. I love the the DIY aspect of that. I grew up playing D and D with Legos um oh, for yeah. miniatures and terrain and stuff you know it was tons of fun they didn't look like anything <laughs> uh it was fantastic <laughs> so <laughs> I, I love this sort of thing i want to play it with fantasy minis and just be like yeah this um this tiefling with a, with a battle axe that's totally a space hulk with <laughs> yeah a huge rail with gun the, or something you know gun. whatever yeah, yeah exactly right, <laughs> right yeah it doesn't matter All it'll right. be fun <laughs> All right. Well, taking a quick peek in the green room, it does look like your first guest is ready. So yes. uh, with, uh, without any further ado, let's go there. All right. Whew. Well, fantastic. Uh, my guest today, Florian, welcome to Owlbear Soup. I'm so excited to have you on here, uh, not only because you are like, in the news right now, but uh, because you have been one of my favorite designers from the DMs Guild for quite some time. How are Thank you doing? <laughs> I'm tired. Yeah. It's right? 
close to, to midnight here. So yeah, so right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate you taking the time to uh, to uh, to join up. Um, I know it's it's helpful because you've got your your Kickstarter campaign going right now. I don't know how you sleep at all, honestly. <laughs> uh, I count the sleep of that. Yes, I slept on a hand on my one or two hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, um, gosh, I have so many questions I want to ask you just about you as a game designer. Um, and of course, getting into Eldritch Sands in just a bit. But um, you have always struck me as a game designer who loves bright characters. You know, just you, the art that I see from your products is, is bright and colorful. And I love that. Um, is that one of your focuses as a game designer? Is that something you want to make sure that you're embracing? <laughs> I think it was never like a um, specific agenda, except for Birds of Paradise, where the agenda mm -hmm. to the artist was as colorful as possible. Yeah. But um, with the others, it's, I think I just tend to like colors uh, from everywhere because color makes life so much brighter and wonderful. And we have them. Why not use them? Right. And it's it's a great, uh, you know, it differentiates you very well from... Um, you know, some of the grim, dark, you know, I'm in a forest and it's gray and it's green and it's black and it's dark, you know, uh, instead, these bright colors, these incredible scenes um, you're seeing in the on the stream here, some of the character artwork from uh, from two products. Um, one of the ones that Justin and I spoke about uh, a while back, uh, Birds of Paradise, uh, which is one of the I, I grabbed that immediately as soon as I saw it on the guild. <laughs> um, Thank so, you. Uh, of course. Let's let's start there. You're you're a long time, uh, you know, DM's Guild author, writing for um, uh, writes the Dungeon Masters Guild, where you can put your product up and uh, use their licenses for D and D. You get fifty percent of the profits, which is a pretty fantastic deal. Um, how have you liked it? <laughs> it was a great uh, starter because, mm -hmm. like, it gives gives you the safe space. This is the specific IP. Right. IP. This is the specific audience. Go wild with it. Right. Anything goes. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Um, and uh, and you've done some some incredible things on there. In fact, I think that you were the first game designer I saw who added stretch goals <laughs> to uh, as as an idea, which is a very cool idea. <laughs> it, it was just because of the overwhelming support, and then uh, I started to like. Okay, I can't stop doing it now. I have to uh -huh. do it anywhere because I got so hooked. Um, I think you're talking about the trash map minis. Um, yes, he has yes. Patreon, go to his Patreon. Um, and yeah, it started out like um, I was talking to the artist uh, of my first product. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, we got to do something. I want to include at least one many of the with a, uh, as a thank you note. And right. we looked at two or three different maker, uh, paper mini makers uh, that were uh, already on uh, like on the scene on Twitter. Um, my artist pointed out to Trash Mob movies that you go with them. them. Go, 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 do it. And <laughs> luckily, he responded. Uh, it was really kind of nice from him. And yeah, uh, and a friendship grew out there uh, from there, too. And so I couldn't resist like adding more minis to all the products I have. Right. And so it's kind of like as those products do better, you've added more of those minis, like more of those characters as, as, uh, as paper craft minis, right? <laughs> yes, yes. It's just I mean, such a the, good idea. <laughs> it's also so nice because you can print them out, put them on your desk. Oh, you don't like them. Uh, put them in a little book or trash them, but you don't have the repercussion. I trash now this, pla this expanse of plastic <laughs> mini. Oh, my gosh. Right. And and since, you know, I, I love paper craft because it means when, you know, the mini that I put on the table is going to be, it's the creature. It's the NPC that you yes. developed, which is is very handy. I can be like, that's who you see. <laughs> Yeah. Um, great. Well, uh, your your product that we talked about last time uh, is Birds of Paradise. Um, mm -hmm. And this is, I am a long, I love Tengus. I love, oh my gosh, just let me play a bird folk all the time. And you you went, like, just took it and went running, like went wild, taking Tengus and Aarakocras, I guess Kenkus and Aarakocras, um, and, uh, and just going wild with them. Tell me a little bit about that book. <laughs> So it all started looking at the Elemental Evil Players Guide, and like, and on the fifth edition, the Arakoka get described as anything goes, like from 
uh, a macaw to uh, just um, your regular regular singbird. I was like, mm -hmm. no, I'm not. I'm not going to go with that because then you look at the uh, player's handbook and says, oh, you have this moon elf, you have those elves. You know, like, and I was like, yeah, and why can't you do that for Arakoker and Kenku? And at that time, there was also like a lot of bird um, documentaries, um, especially one on, on Netflix narrated by Stephen Fry. Um, ah. Dancing with a Bird, I guess, was the title. And I was like, okay. Okay, I have to do this book now. There's there are so many <laughs> wonderful, colorful birds out there, and people got to know that they exist. <laughs> mm -hmm. I there's there's birds that you have in there that I was like, I need to look this bird up. I have no idea what this is. This is amazing. <laughs> um, the, how the many, research oh, was sorry. fun. So fun. I bet. Um, which one of those, I think, um, I'm trying to remember which ones I'm showing up here. I know we have the macaw up here because I, that's such a great image of the macaw with the, the, the spell book and the very ghostly, uh, cool eldritch images. I can't remember the other one. Um, but, uh, how, what was your favorite one to write? What's, was there one that you were like, that's gotta be in the book? <laughs> the P2E. Oh yeah. Uh, it's the hellish P2E because, uh, mm -hmm. also of the description because the local falls call it, call it trash bird because you can't eat it because it's toxic and I was like okay <laughs> that's that's great it's now hellish, a hellish toxic trash bird <laughs> that's going there and being chaotic as uh, as it possibly be, can possibly can be and i really loved that um and i also asked the other designer because katrina bresnik is also on there she did mm -hmm. all the mechanics for that uh -huh. uh, <laughs> We have to go give credit as credit to you. And I mean, absolutely. And she, she, I think she likes the um, uh, the the Kenku, the um, Casuari. Yes, the Casuari. Ah, yes. Very nice. Well, I, I will totally say if there are people out there and you love playing Kenku or Arakokra and you want to see this this wild variety of colors, you know. Um, Again, colors, you know, that the Aarakocra, I think, in the book are presented as just, you know, just white or gray feathers and, and Kenku are definitely just crows, right? So um, it's just this massive variety, you know, different. Uh, the mechanics are great. They are all built out in ways that make them all unique. It's just it's an excellent book. It's a great resource. <laughs> um, so go get it. But uh <laughs> Today, I wanted to check in with you about your current campaign, uh, which is on Kickstarter right now. I mentioned it earlier, uh, Eldritch Sands. Yeah. Uh, oh, my goodness. I, as soon as I saw it, I, I knew I had to get this. And it wasn't just because you used Owlbear as part of your preview. But um, yes. tell me a little bit about uh, where Eldritch Sands came from. Where did this idea come from? So I think it started already two years ago. Mm -hmm. Like... Their first seeds have been planted, and I was like, "Okay, I want I want a D and D game with this with a mech suit." And the first iteration of my idea was using uh, a giant step lock and putting it on top of the player uh, with uh -huh. um, with flexible abilities, so you can change it out. But the first problem I encountered was like, "Okay, now they start stats are growing. Okay, maybe just some stats are growing, but um, what?" Th what threats will they face, and how will this translate into the whole um, fifth edition uh, mm -hmm. ba balancing? And then I put it on the side a while because then I was focused on Birds of Paradise and wanted to make it mm -hmm. as colorful as it can be. Um, <laughs> but then I revisited, and I also wanted to add an element of error because I also wanted to work again with Alex, who worked with me on surfing this crush, and he is really, right. really design wise and also with check Lung. and yeah i quickly messaged them i'm like okay you have first steps on this crazy idea <laughs> when i go uh -huh. uh, and yeah and then they 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 answered the call and um one week later i was uh, so first hammered out like the rough outline this is the world this is how it's gonna be and then I again stumbled upon the uh, the thing: how will the players interact with the world and in combat or in their abilities? And like, huh? mm -hmm. and the idea for the suits again really has like that would be interesting to have the suits again. And and then well, like okay, maybe maybe make it just like some armor, but 
it's the class now and get rid of right. the old class and the new class and then like that but that's not enough like just an armor and then I'll, I looked at the OGL because that's the piece you can use if you're not publishing on the Demon's Guild. You have some restriction there. Right. And, then the, and one of the iconic beasts of D&D that is in the OGL is the old beer. Mm -hmm. I mean, you show old beer soup. I mean, right, right. <laughs> we so, cannot call the show Beholder Soup. <laughs> that's right. So, um, yeah, and I'm oh, like, okay, yeah. All bear. Everybody gonna gonna understand that all bear is just um, barbarian type that goes into your face. And if you have this all bear doom, the mechanics become very clear to you just by the name and looking at it. Right. You know exactly. Absolutely. Okay, this is what's going to happen with when I play this character. And then I, I was like, yeah, okay, this this works. This works because from the visual, uh, from the name, everything is clear now. Mm -hmm. So let's see. So you you have developed these these suits, but the players themselves, right? They uh, they have the ability to connect with the suits. Is that uh, and uh, and use this eldritch tech? So they the players are similar to fifth edition. Uh, the, those larger than life uh, characters that um, mm -hmm. have a power core installed in them that can power the suits. Uh -huh. uh, okay. Because the power they're using is the Shrunius Eldritch power that corrupts mm -hmm. other tech, and there was yes. an incident with the mimic, <laughs> and those play those players uh, the players can keep this power kind of in check. There's a system that uh, built in that we also have in the free PDF preview that's also on Kickstarter right now. Um, mm -hmm. Is that you when you use your power? And you push yourself, you accumulate this eldritch influence, and this yes. is an entity that takes hold of you, up to the point that you're in a, this entity has the complete thrall of you, and your character is basically a non-playable, non-playable character from that point. Which, like, it's it's the balance of uh, risk and reward, uh, uh -huh. and and we made sure to make sh uh, so that it will be a fun thing. So, for example, one of the things is you can always resolve your action even if the Eldritch Influence table in the end says you become an NPC because if you're going to go risk for the final blow, you should be rewarded yeah. and not punished. Right. Okay, so so let's see. So you are you are a person, you you have this this core inside you. You use it to power one of these suits and you uh, I've seen listed the owl bear suit, the unicorn suit, the mimic. Um, no, the mimic is an enemy. The other one is the imp suit. Ah, that's right. Sorry. Um, Sorry. And uh, and uh, and as you get these on, you, you're able to go and interact with the world. Um, you know, powering yourselves, corrupting you as as you go. Um, what is the world like? The world is uh, a ruinous wasteland. It's an arid desert, and it's a statement of like global warming. Um, mm -hmm. I can't deny it because that's let's face it, that's on our all all, all on our minds, and I think. It should be also like some of those elements should be present on the games. And yeah, so you interact with the world and either you can bring it back the way it was, hopefully. Uh -huh. You can say, darn it all, I hitched myself to those guys who want to leave the planet. You can double down and say, Ooh. no, that's the world now. We're going to live in it. How it is, we make it as hospitable as we can, but not more. Or you go to do a to those who created all those Eldritch Shack and say, well, we're going to wizard the thing right up with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wow. So I love that there's a there's the world and you have like these goal conditions, sort of, like your characters can be focused on on outcomes. I, I like that as, as someone who's trying to make a character, is I often don't know what my goal is, excuse me, in a campaign. And I love that you were kind of writing that in. Now I suddenly have like four goals that I could consider right from the get-go and then the campaign could lead us you know uh Somewhere. through those yeah that's fantastic that's incredible um that sounds so cool i mean so different than the you know you make a character and go to water deep now it is you know we're in the, we're in the wasteland we have this suit that keeps us alive out here uh we're we're always in survival mode and uh trying to you know save the planet escape it or you know <laughs> other options um 
how incredible um your team is is wonderful as well so i i wish you all the best of luck on on this campaign uh, i'm happy to be a backer i can't wait to get my copy um and uh, anyone, I, I saw the link there in the chat. This is Eldritch Sands. You can find it on Kickstarter right now for the next 20 days. Um, yes. uh, like I said earlier, they funded yesterday, I believe. Um, and we hit some and, stretch uh, goals. Yeah. We yeah. already so have the be... Nightmare Suit in. That's an additional suit for players to choose from, mm -hmm. who is the antithesis to the Unicorn Suit. The Unicorn Suit Ooh. would be your healer or shielder. And this one will be the debuffer, more or less, who will can influence your enemies. And we have the first threat, which is the Dire Wolf, which was an old Eldritch tech that's no longer in use, but somehow popped up, and you don't know for what purpose. <laughs> Very cool. Well, I, I'm really excited. I, I mean, best of luck on this. This is a great product. Um, and uh, thank you so much for joining us, for staying up so late for this. You're going to stick around for Adventure Time in a little bit? Yes. Help us write a wild story? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, good. Uh, well, then we'll see you in, a, in about 15 minutes, but it sounds like it is time to flip this over uh, to, uh, to Justin. So take it away. <laughs> All right. I am joined today by a fantastic artist who uh, I've known, I've known uh, Rebecca Hicks for uh, about 38 years now and well we went we went to, to elementary school together and uh <laughs> no no becky's a really good friend rebecca's a really good friend and she's a fantastic artist in fact some of you uh will recognize uh her art it is above me uh where it says owlbear soup and it's down in the corner and it's underneath me she is the creator of chef owlbear d uh, welcome to the show, Rebecca. How's it going? Hi. <laughs> uh, I I did forget to mention uh, she is also a fantastic streamer. She streams so much, so much on on Twitch. Everyone should definitely go check her out. Uh, it's uh, Twitch.tv/slash Rebecca Hicks Prime, and uh, Mix Miss Pickles in there. Uh, mix pickles in there uh, shouting her out so what bring the pickles bring the pickles yeah <laughs> oh so how are you doing i'm doing very well considering just the world gestures yeah. broadly um doing doing great really really excited and nervous to be here and and everything because i really love streaming but i still don't feel like i have any <laughs> idea what i'm doing <laughs> uh, I your your streams are fantastic. Uh, okay. For for folks who who want to know, uh, uh, Rebecca draws on the streams, uh, has trivia, uh, in uh, you know uh, lessons as well, because uh, Rebecca happens to be a fantastic teacher who has changed oh, the lives of many a folk. Um, I've 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 heard stories of some of her students. So uh, you you make stuff up so good. I'm real good at it. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I uh I'm I'm a marketer by profession. <laughs> Skills. <laughs> oh man. So I brought you on today because uh we were just talking about cons and uh last a couple weeks ago we had Dickie Adams on to talk about being a volunteer at a con. Uh a little bit before that, uh we had Jess uh Dr. Jess Hebert on to talk about uh health and safety at a con. Um and 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 uh, Rebecca uh, is probably goes to more cons than anyone I know. Too many. <laughs> uh, and yeah, and and uh, and I I brought I brought you on today to talk about what does it mean to be a good con goer. Um, in it in in and what I mean by this is is if you are someone who is going to a con and you're there to see all your favorite people, what. What are some of those things that you can do to make sure that people like Rebecca, who I see at cons, uh, and 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 sometimes I'm at cons, like how how do you make sure the people who are working the con, the the people you're going to go see, how how do you make sure they have a good time, and and you don't impede on their time as well? It's you know I, the very first convention I ever attended attended was a San Diego Comic-Con in 1994. So I was an attendee long before I became an, an exhibitor. One of the reasons I became a creator um, was so that I could have a table and a chair to sit at to eat lunch 
at conventions because like at San Diego Comic-Con, it just got so crowded um, that I had no place to eat lunch. So I was like, yeah, I'll just write and draw. That sounds easy. Um, but I've been an attendee for ever since 1994. Oh, that was so long ago. Um, so what I learned by being an attendee and then as an exhibitor, you know, so I've been on both sides of the table is that it's really as easy as just being a good person, <laughs> um, which I know it's really hard, especially when you're secretly evil. I understand this on a personal level. Um, but just start with be considerate, um, you know, to yourself, take care of yourself when you're a convention attendee, make sure you're hydrated, you know, wear comfortable shoes so that you don't ask to put them under my table. That has been done. Don't, don't, that's a whole thing. Um, so be considerate of yourself, be considerate of your fellow attendees. Goodness, that's, that's a big one. Mm -hmm. Um, and just respect people's boundaries. That's really, really huge. So just yeah. be a decent human. I mean, <laughs> everywhere, please. So that's yeah. a good start. Be a decent human. Yeah. What are, what are some of the activities that you see happening at cons that, um, you know, maybe people don't notice are, uncomfortable or or you know or yeah you know, and, and, and i don't i don't want to i don't want to bad mouth people right i no um, no but, it's okay. but 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 sometimes you know you you see people at cons and they're doing these things and they don't realize that they're doing these things or they don't really understand what it's doing to the people around them um you know and i can think of a few but uh, i i'm sure you have a few as well i i have um done some of these things and then realized when I was on the other side of the table that it was like, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> exactly, right? Yeah. Right? Um, but yeah, there are, for, for me personally, and you know, I can only speak uh, for myself, but I have heard this from a lot of fellow uh, independent artists specifically, you know, that's my, my realm. Um, that's my tiny little castle. And uh, a lot of it has to do with boundaries, the, the stories, when we do tell stories, because we do trash talk, it helps us deal with the stress of conventions. <laughs> yes. Um, those stories usually involve just, just not being respectful of boundaries. Um, mm -hmm. So the booth invader yep. is e even if I see you every year at a convention, it's, it, this is hard for me to say because I know um, people need emotional validation, um, but we're not best friends. And I appreciate you uh, as someone who enjoys my work, but you're not coming over to my house. We're not going to have a meal together. I have to establish some boundaries sometimes. Mm -hmm. So the big one at convention specifically is don't buy someone's art and then think you can go behind the table. That is a sacred space. Someone's booth is, it's a safe space for the creator. Like I said, there's, there's a lot of social anxiety uh, for a lot of us when it comes to conventions. And we need that space in our table to distance ourselves so that we can be on and make you feel good as someone who enjoys our work. But we need that space to be able to do that. It's like, that's where we collect our spoons. Exactly. So no, please don't ask to come sit behind the table because your feet are tired. I'm sorry your feet are tired, but there are other places you will need to go. That is not something that I can provide. So yeah, the booth invaders and then the booth barnacles. Oh, bless their hearts. That's a term I believe my memory serves was created by webcomics creator Brad Geiger. And the booth barnacle is exactly what it sounds like. It's like a barnacle on the side of a ship and they just stay at your booth and they talk to you for hours. And even if it's someone you know and love, you just it just takes all your energy. Um, so don't be a booth invader. Don't be a booth barnacle. It's not like, I mean, I'm only speaking for myself. It's not like I just want you to come to my table and go, I love your art and buy my art and go. <laughs> Though now that I say that out loud, that does sound pretty awesome sometimes. <laughs> But still, just mm -hmm. just don't overstay your welcome. It's like when you've been invited to somebody's house. It's like, don't move in, okay? It's like mm -hmm. eventually. Yeah. Other people so, want our time too. So Be consider to them. Yeah. So let's 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 flip this and 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 reverse it. Uh 
Oh, don't, um, don't make me do Missy Elliott. It would be <laughs> such an insult to Missy Elliott. So sorry, Missy. So sorry. Um, I love you. What does a what does a good guest to your table look like? Say, you know, say, say I'm I, I don't know you and I'm walking up to your table. What what is my what is my ideal path? Like, oh my god, Rebecca Hicks is here. Uh she has the littlest va vampire stuff all over the place, and I love it. And I, I want to say hi, and I want to buy her stuff. What is how? What does that look like to you? What does the ideal uh, fan customer look like to you? Okay, I'm just gonna get this out of the way now because the 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 funny Brooklyn part of me wants to say, you come to my booth, you throw money, you leave. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, yeah, just come to my booth and just go rain. <laughs> um, no, I mean, for me, it's it's just like anyone else I interact with, it, whether at a convention or not. Just one, be yourself and be comfortable in yourself because you're awesome, unless you're an asshole. And if you are, I will let you know. Don't worry. I'm very nice to everybody except mean people. Yeah. Um. So just one, be yourself. How would you introduce yourself to anybody? Say hi. I, you know. Hi, I'm Rebecca Hicks. My pronouns are she, her. I really love your art or um, I, I, you know, enjoyed your work online and start mm -hmm. from there and then just really read the room. If there's a lot of people in the booth, maybe come back later and we can have a little more time to talk, but not long enough to be a booth barnacle. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself, but I don't need your entire life story. Okay. Yeah. Not your therapist. I'm just an artist. Okay. <laughs> Not your mom. I'm just, mm -hmm. I can only provide so much emotional validation, folks. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, like, like with you, Justin, I know that um, you uh, and I have something in common and that, you know, we love to do this stuff for people, but we also need time to regather our spoons, as they say, and we can be introverted. Uh, mm -hmm. at times. So, you know, start the way you're comfortable. If like, if you came up to my table, it's like, hi, you know, um, my name is Justin and I, I really enjoy your art. That's enough to start. And then don't push yourself past the point where you're uncomfortable. You know, if you're mm -hmm. introverted or whatever, and you're not a big conversationalist, that's fine. Let, let me know if I'm not picking up on that. So really just be yourself, be honest and be considerate and shower me with cash. Ideal. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I will remember that next time I go to a con to shower you with cash. Um, Make it rain. <laughs> <laughs> Booths are not cheap, people. They yeah. are not cheap. Yeah, and I mean that's that's another interesting thing to to remember is that the the folks who who are boothing ninety percent of them paid for that booth, uh, <laughs> and it's not cheap. Uh, so, oh, and actually, there's a good question in the chat uh, about sanitized cash. I know, Ooh. I know, this is a thing, and and uh, is is sweaty money. Uh, nobody wants your sweaty dollars. <laughs> um, yes, uh, a certain song uh, by Laser is coming to mind right now. Um, <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to tell this one real quick because yeah. it's funny. Yeah. Um, I had this fabulous cosplayer come to my table once, and they were cross-playing Catwoman. So this just really good-looking young dude, um, dressed like the 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 black tight leather goggles version of Catwoman, because she's had so many costumes. I love her. Yeah. Um, but anyway, this guy came, and but but the costume wasn't a full cat suit. It was booty shorts yeah booty shorts. and and there was there was nothing left of the imagination so i appreciated <laughs> that but it was really really skin tight and he really liked my art and he bought a piece and i was like where is the money going to come from he reached up under the front of the pant leg what little pant there was yeah and pulled out a $5 bill. And of course I made a face. <laughs> I try not to. And he goes, oh, I've got a pocket under there. It's fine. But I'm still thinking what Abe Lincoln has seen cannot be unseen. <laughs> right. And that was, I, I did not mean to, but I was a little bit 
<laughs> when I took that. Um, so that's always been a thing. But you know what? I have not gotten to the point where I can wrap my brain around that for the conventions that will hopefully, hopefully, hopefully be coming back mm -hmm. in the fall, several of which, you know, I will be exhibiting at. Um, when it comes to sanitize money, once again, be considerate. Mm -hmm. And uh, just about all of us now um, are able to take credit cards. Um, thank you to uh, companies like Square who have made that an economic possibility for even the smallest of creators like myself. Um, credit cards are possible. If you have a cell phone, um, like an Apple Watch, any kind of contactless pay, right, is preferable. But we also know, you know, you, you got cash, you got cash. So as best as you can, sanitize it. Um, but if someone has a sign in their booth, which I can totally see this happening, I may consider it myself. Um, I don't want to have to get vaccinated, people. Um, I don't want to have to. But if I have to put up a sign to you know, protect my health and my husband's health that says we cannot accept cash, please respect any vendor that does that because mm -hmm. they're doing that for a good reason. And I know it sucks, but it sucks for everybody. So maybe don't be yelling at people that decide to do that. Please be understanding. But that is a good thank you for bringing that up because that's something that I should be discussing with my fellow indie artists about yeah. you know what in conventions how are we going to do this yeah how are we going to do this because you know it's a privilege to have the ability to pay with a credit card and to pay with a you know contactless payment with your phone or your watch not everyone has that privilege so we have to take a lot of things into consideration but yeah cash is gross but i still want a lot of it so you know yeah <laughs> All right. Well, it, it's been fantastic chatting with you. We're going to get moving over to the next portion of our uh, of our show. But first, I just want to make sure everyone in the chat can see it. But for those who can't, make sure to go to uh, Kofi.com. That's ko-fi.com slash Luna C Studios. Um, and uh, back uh, Becky's uh, uh, I keep wanting to call it coffee. I uh, know it's so confusing. I know, I know. But coffee, yeah. Kofi, my patron yeah. campaign. There, yeah, exactly. And, and lunacy is spelled L-U-N-A. Here we go. I will type it. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, check the chat for that. And then also, uh, make sure to follow Becky here on Twitch. Uh, she is Rebecca Pr uh, Rebecca Hicks Prime, as you can see in the chat right there. Uh, and check out some of her streams. But here we go. Are we ready? I think if I did this right, everybody should be here now. Oh, no. Oh, man. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> Yay. All right. Now I have to figure out how to fix what. Yeah, there we go. Push All the right. button, Frank. <laughs> I know. I, uh, well, I, I have to hide. Uh, I have to make sure we can see the subtitles, even though sometimes they're a little wonky. I love that your stream has subtitles. We're going to talk about how I can get some on mine. That would be awesome. I'd love to increase my accessibility. Thank yeah, you. it'll be even easier for you than it is for us. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. We, 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 we tend to have a bunch of, uh, we tend to have a bunch of uh, guests. So that makes it a little bit more challenging. All Ooh. right. So what I, oh, I need to arrange everything so that I can see if I need to rainbow puke people. Um, okay. Okay. And Fair here enough. we go. So welcome to the adventure writing portion of this, yes. our episode of Albert Soup, where we write an adventure together. This adventure does not have to be fantasy. It doesn't have to be D&D. &D. Uh, the only rules for this are, um, you know, it has to somewhat be a story, I guess. Wow. And the thing is, is uh, our Chef Albert D is the one who's sending the adventurers out of the Exploration Society, which all of you in the audience can join by backing our Patreon. Uh, he sends Exploration Society members out. He sends them through portals, typically, uh, to weird places to do weird things. Uh, and that's, <laughs> and that, is, uh, that, is, that is essentially our adventure writing. So wow. we start with scene one. <laughs> the party... <Gosh. laughs> mm. The party is at Chef, <laughs> and Chef sends them somewhere. Right. right? That's, um, that's pretty much how these always start. Okay. Yeah. I've been trying to think, <laughs> like, just thinking about our interviews and what we talked about today, trying to come up with a, with themes that really, like, speak to us this time. Um, 
I, I don't know. Uh, would uh, would Chef Albier D send us to a, a magical wasteland of some kind? <laughs> yeah. All right. So the PCs. Uh, Eldritch have wasteland, to go should we say? A magical <laughs> Eldritch uh, wasteland. Great. For what? Why are they? Why are they going there? There's, 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 a, there's got to be a reason Chef Alberti is sending folks to this wasteland, not just for a for a summer vacation. Um, why? Why? I Anybody mean, I in guess. the audience? Why are they going? <laughs> or, uh, Eldritch Coachella? Oh, they're going to Coachella! <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, this is the good. chance that you had. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right. So, Chef Alberti uh, sends the sends the players uh, to uh, the Eldritch uh, Eldritch Wasteland Lollapalooza because I want to date myself. Yes. <laughs> Uh, because uh, I, I, I think Lollapalooza is more fun than 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 Coachella, <laughs> uh, because I'm old. All right, so <laughs> there. Okay, you know, let's make this all big. Yeah. Uh, so, all right. So, why are they going to Lollapalooza? Are they catering? Right. The, they're catering. Are they catering Lollapalooza? I mean, okay. I feel like someone has to, and the chef yeah. can't really leave. You know, the, the society. Yeah. Who's go who's going to feed Lord Dom Zookington? <laughs> <laughs> right also it's probably a franchise right now he's so famous oh he's, he's got famous. an extent yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh so they are catering uh Lollapalooza. they are catering the green room oh um, yeah and so and oh ooh, what if this is a series of small uh encounters in which the PCs are gathering uh, the 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 ingredients uh, for for the meals of the celebrities. They have to. Oh, so you, yeah. Oh, 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 worry better. They have to serve all the booth barnacles coming over, <laughs> and, and they have to shimmy them along because some of them want to stay and chat about the food. <laughs> but oh, the line is forming behind them. Oh, and, and they want all the they cash. Have line duties. <laughs> all right, we have so much stuff, uh, and they collect the cash. All right, we have some ideas here. We're, we're, <laughs> this is great. We're, we're going somewhere. Oh, I'm seeing a call for some rainbow puke. I have a lot going on, and the <laughs> yeah. Uh, so okay, so so for those of you who don't know what rainbow puke is, whenever somebody's camera goes funky. I have a button that's called uh, Rainbow Puke, and it defunkifies oh, it. That's yeah. a good defunkifies. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, I'm I'm using a, a a program that was supposed to do that for me, but it's not. So I have to occasionally slap the Rainbow Puke button. <laughs> 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 All right. Oh my God. Uh, behind the scenes. All right. So I think I think I, th I think we have some 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 interesting ideas here for. Uh, All right. So they are going. Let's see. So, so they're going wow. to Wasteland La Palooza. They're catering Wasteland La Palooza, and uh, it sounds like they're not they're not doing the green room. They are serving uh, the audience, maybe the VIPs because VIPs are always annoying. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like that um, idea. I like that they are they are dealing with the line. They've got all sorts of food stuff that they have to do, of course. But you know, the the duties of the exploration society and don't have to just focus on food. So so maybe they have a couple different tasks they have to complete uh, in there as as part of their yeah. their thing, right? They they do have to feed the line. They do have to make sure the line moves. They do have to sort M and M's because some of us don't eat blue M and M's because uh, they're uh, evil. <laughs> they have to make. They have to make sure everybody pays in credit, not in cash. Absolutely, yes. nice right? clean credit. <laughs> so it's a tough job. It's a series of skills <laughs> that they have to exhibit here. Yeah. Um, I love this. This sounds this too much like my real life. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> Let's say, let's say that it was your real life, and you wanted something fantastic and amazing to happen, to change everything. Uh 
to mess with our interns here, what would it be? What, what's going to happen to to ruin this event or change this? Event? <laughs> oh, there's um, a good this suggestion. Doesn't have to be ruined, but but changing they are, the scene. They are they are they are actually spying on specific VIPs. Oh, okay. This is from the chat. So uh, they are there, are actually there to spy on a certain VIP. Who is this certain VIP? Okay. Mm. And why do we need to spy on them? What are they doing? They're, they, they, <laughs> they're a bard of some kind, a very well-known, sure. popular bard. They might secretly be like a double agent bard for whatever factions are existing in this mm -hmm. world at the time. And so we need to get some intel to find out what side they're on. Nice. With our super conversation skills. So yeah, I do love it. it. Huh? the spying. Yeah. So, yeah. So a well, a well known spy bar, a well known bard who we think ooh, jumped in the wrong spot, uh, who we think is a spy and we want to uncover it and make sure they are on the side of the Exploration Society. I like it. Yes, I like it. Uh, and also, someone mentioned that uh, at some point, the they have to protect supplies from the interlopers. Uh, Ooh, oh, sabotage. I mean, the bars right, are the beastly the boys because they're they're beasts of some kind, and the beastly boys those they're they're suspected. Yes, we suspect they might be doing sabotage. Okay, I'm also old, Justin. <laughs> I know this is music. The beastly, this is gold. the this beastly, is gold. the beastly <laughs> boys <perfect>. are planning <laughs> sabotage. All right, but then we have to bring in our giant robot to make it sabotage. Huh? Oh, <laughs> oh, the music video, right? No? Mm -hmm. Let's make it intergalactic. A, we need a <laughs> giant intergalactic uh, robot. Oh, I love that you don't limit genres. Mwah. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh no, this is great. This is great. Okay, so, whew, um, so are they gonna like? Is this gonna happen in the middle of the performance? Like we've been spying, and they head up on stage, and is that the moment when sabotage occurs? Or are they gonna yeah, do it most before? disastrous? It would be. Yeah. Yeah. With the whole crowd All watching. Right, so I think that's that might be the final scene, right? Uh, the final scene is after the. So so we we already know how this is all gonna go, right? So after the spy lets the PCs know about the sabotage. Yeah, the uh, uh, that scene is titled I'm telling all y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the robot uh, explodes <laughs> out of the stage. Scheming on a thing. Scheming on a thing. Of the stage Love and it. the Beastly Boys uh, jump inside and you have to take it down. Yeah, but they have to get the buddies movies moving of the audience. Yeah. And yes. they need the audience's help. The weakness of the robot is dance. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Okay, so if the if the audience dances, right, that's going to weaken this robot and allow the beastly right. boys to be defeated. I see. I see. Yeah, hmm. yeah. It, it, it's not going to kill the robot, but it's going to weaken it enough for the PCs uh, to take it down. It's right, because it just sees the dance and it just wants to dance as well. So <laughs> some of its systems kind of are too focused, right? <laughs> yeah, All I right. love it. Uh, all right, so, all right, so let's 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 take let's take a let's take a quick gander at what we have so far. Uh, we have, uh, we 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 have a the chef sends the uh, PCs to the Eldritch Magical Wasteland to go to Eldritch Lollapalooza. They are there to find a find an, a, a specific spy VIP in uh -huh. the audience or in in or as, in the VIP area. By serving them food, and so some of the tasks they have to do to keep their their uh, their their cover is they have to feed people in the line and keep it moving and take credit cards uh, and protect the supplies from people who are trying to grab them. Uh, when they find the spy, 
when they find and confront a spy, uh, he tells them about the beastly boys. Right. Yes. And and I, I think maybe in that moment when they're learning, they realize that they are being spied upon by a brass monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I see that yeah. funky monkey in the chat and they they're like oh no constructs everywhere by a brass monkey that funky monkey so good I, oh, I, I just like that uh, everything about this villain is, is, is just way too themed. Um, I like that joy. You know, even if even if the players don't see it, but even if, like, the things are named <laughs> after these and the DM gets to read it all. Right? I love that stuff. Yeah. You know, I like those little all things. Right. You, you are welcome. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> who, who wouldn't love a funky monkey? Even if you've never heard right. that, like, like that song, who wouldn't love a funky monkey? Who wouldn't love right. a brass monkey? Monkeys! <laughs> all right. I have shot uh -huh. uh, Rich. I tossed you over a, the link to to this doc so that you can jump Perfect. in there. I have to step away for just a second, but the rest of you continue onward. I'll be right back. Oh, yeah. I am in. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is great. So, so we've got them being spied upon by uh, by this monkey, right? I love this scene because um, monkeys. Oh, I guess I'm going to be writing down here. That's fine. Um, let's uh let's talk about that like how is this uh this vip that they meet the vip who is i guess a spy on our side who is going to tell us um who who are they what's their whole deal about they're the queen and they want to save radio gaga <laughs> i see um what's going on here oh it's working it's everything's working great <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness um all right so sorry let's uh there's something happening and i can't fix it okay uh who's the vip spy again it is uh it is uh uh sorry who which, our queen the queen the queen the queen the queen all right it's great I like the idea of, um, it's, it's food related i like the idea of it's it's the dairy queen maybe the dairy queen bay dairy queen beyonce green just Going with the music. Focus on the <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, you no. know, it's the queen. I, I, I love oh, that my. the queen is the VIP spy. That's so good. Right. So we've got whether this is going to be the, the dairy queen uh, Beyonce, which I, I love. I think that's fantastic. Uh, yeah. um, it is absolutely going to be the dairy queen Beyonce. I mean, yeah. Um, Right. And so we need to uh, make sure. I mean, that's good because that means the writer is very specific. Right. Uh, we can't go serving the Dairy Queen Beyonce like a hamburger. No, <laughs> no, no, no. And, and it's lemonade for the drink. Of course. Right. <laughs> yeah. So we need to figure out exactly what that is through our spying to get us through the door at all. Because those guards aren't going to let us in to talk to Beyonce. <laughs> Otherwise, I love it. And uh, oh, and you have to make sure not to bring uh, anything with lactose because she's lactose intolerant. <laughs> Which is ironic if she's a Dairy Queen. Yep. <laughs> right, it's not fair. That's 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 how she'll know, right? That's the thing is is you have to bring her like a shake, and if the sh if the milkshake you know that brings all the boys uh -huh. to the yard uh -huh. has dairy in it, uh, she's just not going to accept it. We need, so we need, we need very specifically to build a, to make a non-dairy milkshake, okay. uh, lemonade yeah, to flavor, non-dairy milkshake, lemonade flavor, lemonade and flavor. With a side of hot sauce. Yeah. With a side of hot sauce done. Okay. Uh, I like <laughs> that we have that set already. Everybody needs to know what that is. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and that's, and that's how, and that's how we'll know, or that's how the, we'll know we have all the clues. Otherwise Queen Bee is going to, um, gonna know right oh no hot sauce yeah. these must be spies right i'm gonna turn it away <laughs> okay beautiful um so let's see so we get in we start learning from uh from queen bee that there are these beastly boys they are gonna cause some havoc here um robot style um <laughs> Uh, which is good information for us to know because we need to go and stop that right now um they're on stage pretty soon i i would expect um mm-hmm um they're the headliners they're about they're, to, the headliners? they're about to go on stage you just course. say that someone else oh, is wait, headlining no. a show that beyonce's at 
<laughs> oh, that's true. You're right. You're right. The queen, the Dairy Queen Beyonce, <laughs> is is headlining, and and the openers are going to be the Beastly Boys, and she's afraid that the Beastly Boys are going to 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 ruin the audience and everything for her. There we go. There we go. Okay, so. Ooh. <laughs> so they chat they get their quest they see the brass monkey run off uh getting lost in the crowd very quickly maybe um okay what happens next what gets us to the stage right. what's in the middle a crowd I, of I feel... people <laughs> so uh i i i have i have borrowed from the chat and i have thrown something in here uh there okay. is a uh, benevolent monk that's uh tending to the medical tent named uh Ayuk, who's Adam, his master, uh, master so martial arts as a new style <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh there we go uh dj I regular respect that's that's dj regular wow. nailed it that's a that's great okay. you are making with so... the free free that's incredible <laughs> So I, I love, okay, okay, okay. So we got to get them to the medical tent. Here's, here's my suggestion is that they are trying to get through this crowd, right? How do you get through a crowd? Uh, I mean, they're thick, they're packed, they're moshing. You can either mosh really well or crowd surf, but whichever one you choose, you're going to end up in the medical tent. <laughs> it's just a matter of how <laughs> cool you are along the way. Right. <laughs> like, are, are there any orcs in our party that I, ca I can imagine orcs be really great at like moshing? <laughs> yeah, not even intentionally yeah. moshing they just always mosh whether they yeah. want to be moshing or uh, not the PCs uh, yeah the, the PCs I'm also typing in here now apparently uh, the, the, the PCs oh, yeah. can go through the orc um, orc mosh pit <laughs> or uh, crowd surf uh, through the uh, I don't know, um, Goliaths. I don't know. <laughs> Just trying to think of of another like group. They the Goliaths. They don't. They don't really like moshing, but they but they love they love carrying people over them. So you can you can join up uh, there, and uh, wherever it is, whatever you do. But but for the crowd serving, you need this inflatable boat. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> because it's not crowd serving; it's not on a flat boat. I like it. I like but it. You, you end up at the you end up at the med tent. Uh, you end up at the med tent. Uh, but bonus points if you find the inflatable boat to carry you <laughs> across <laughs> the sea of Goliaths. Uh, Goliaths. I don't know, dancing. <laughs> I, I love this. Because one of my favorite things to do is is give people a task and just say, how do you accomplish this? So, like, you know, you see uh -huh. the, the, the brass monkey running through the crowd. You need to get across it. What is your deal? Like, what are you going to do? Um, you know, give people the options and just have them go. Um, so yeah. I like this because it could I lead to, it. you know, I'm going to use, uh, you know, prestidigitation or casts firework spells. You know, I'm going to start my own little rave as I'm going through here. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I love that stuff. Um, and somehow, yeah, at least someone should end up in the medical tents, I think, <laughs> you know, because um, I like this idea that we have this monk who is going to help us out. Uh, tell us what to do. Tell us how to find this this monkey. This brass monkey, this yeah, funky you monkey. Know, brass monkeys blend. It's gonna be right. really hard to find. I, I like in my mind, it's, it's it's in my mind, right. it's like one of those like like with the like it's, like it's, a, it's, it's a little small. Brass yeah, monkey. yeah. But it's a funky monkey, so <laughs> it's dressed like Bootsy Collins. So it's like <laughs> it's just like just in the outfit with the clothes, just uh -huh. Parliament oh. Funkadelic style outfits. It's a very well dressed oh, funky wow. monkey. That's great. I, love, <laughs> I can picture that, and that's horrible in in my mind. But it's, there it is. Oh man! Uh, all right, this is this is this is amazing. Uh, so uh, wow! All right. Well, I guess I guess they've made it to the medical tent. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so now what? So they they've made it to the medical tent. So now right. to get their weapon of choice. <laughs> <laughs> what is their weapon of choice? It could be stop hammer time. 
<laughs> we we could learn this. how to use Daft Punks, but they retired. <laughs> <laughs> I love this space oh, no. base here. Oh. <laughs> the chat, the thunder wave, thunder so wave type attack, yes. <laughs> oh, or it could be the powerful off. Oh yeah. Oh. oh. Most powerful okay. weapon of all. So right, so they whatever happens, they they get here to this tent, and this monk is going to tell them they have to find you know their perfect vehicle to get through. Um, every every player must come up with their music based power attack, <laughs> whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and use that to get to the stage as the concert begins. I mean, are we headed over there yeah. pretty quickly? Okay. If they've got that, I feel like they're successful as they approach the say the 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 stage, right? And they start seeing yeah. the concert get going. They're moving. They're they're getting into it, and then uh, and then robot attack should be coming pretty quick. Do you think the PCs should be able to stop robot attack from happening by like getting backstage before the concert, or is it just like no timing? We're moving. No. I uh, I don't think okay. so. I think I think we need that scene where the giant robot bursts out. Yes. Uh, the, of the stage. Yes. Right. Uh, As the heroes you know. crowd oh. surf towards it on their uh, inflatable boats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Singing four different songs. <laughs> the wait the five beastly boys, uh, all jump into smaller robots. That then turn into one giant <laughs> robot. <laughs> oh my gosh. Perfect. <laughs> and uh, and with enough checks, uh, the uh, PCs can get the audience dancing. Uh, dancing, which uh, breaks up the giant robot. Right. Pew, pew. And makes it easier for the PCs to take on the Beastly Boys. So it's going to be murder on the dance floor, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, don't, don't panic. We, we, we already <laughs> go. Yeah. We already <laughs> went there. Sorry, we have to go full yep. in now. <laughs> I like it. I you like it. Go all in. All in or nothing. Oh my gosh! Oh, no. <laughs> All right, so murder. I, on the I dance love. Floor. I love that this scene is murder on the dance floor, and the epilogue is panic at the or don't panic at the disco. <laughs> it's great. Trying to get everyone back to normal. Let's continue this. It's time for Queen Bee to get up here. <laughs> Save the show. All right. At some it. point, we got to represent country, and Dolly Parton's got to show up because <laughs> she is a magical being. I could totally see her being some kind of powerful magic user. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, so <laughs> this mission is called uh, Working oh. Nine to Five. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, that's a beautiful story. That's a beautiful story of like adventurous service and then. Um, Musical chaos. <laughs> Are these yeah. always like this, you guys? I'm so yeah. sorry. Yeah, no, <laughs> okay. no, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, when, okay. when four people come to cover, you don't stop believing, right? Right. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yeah. so. oh, wow. Um, this is great. This is so good. <laughs> okay, so Panic at the Disco. Uh, Beyonce enters the stage with special guest I uh, guess Dolly Parton and then for Don't Stop Believing the PCs hop in the portal and head home right getting the stamp of approval the from uh, all our yeah. VIPs back to the yeah. Yeah, society yeah. yeah wow I love the idea of this giant robot at a music festival <laughs> battle. That's a great scene. <laughs> it has some oh. Scott Pilgrim rhymes, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> so the, oh, that's the movie man. you could play right. in the background during a lot of this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Well, that's our adventure for this wow. week. Uh, make sure and follow <laughs> Rebecca Hicks at Rebecca Hicks Prime right here on Twitch 
Also go check out her Kofi, uh, which is attached to Lunar Sea Studios. Um, and then, uh, of course, uh, Fabian, your uh, oh man, Florian, your Kickstarter is going right now. And uh, I believe there are some links in the chat right now for people to go follow you all on Twitter, learn a little bit more about everyone. And uh, for the folks who are watching this on YouTube, just a little reminder, go ahead and like and subscribe. Hit that little ringy dingy button so that you know when we are live and uh, when the new videos are up. Uh, Rebecca, uh, Florian, anything else you guys want to say before we, uh, we wrap this on up? It was a pleasure. Oh, well, thank oh, good. You. This is awesome. It's awesome oh, to meet you, good. Florian, and and your work's amazing. And it's like you have a new fan and a friend. Oh, <laughs> I mean, and, and, so right. and friendship oh, wow. is magic. Friendship is magic. I'm so glad you two could be here. This has been really, really fun. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, man. Uh, so, unfortunately, you guys missed the best comment ever about showering people with dirty, dirty cash. Uh, but I'm thank you so much, I'm everyone, for who joined us today. Uh, this uh, will be on YouTube. Make sure to uh, go to YouTube, subscribe to YouTube, follow us. Uh, make sure to join the Patreon, become a member of the Exploration Society. Um, make sure to back... Uh, Florian's Kickstarter. Make sure to go to Kofi.com slash Luna Seas Studio or Luna C Studios. Mm-hmm. And um yeah. So Rich, yeah, right. um, is there anything people could be looking forward to you over the next few days? You know, the thing is I have a Kickstarter going right now. Um if you are if oh. you are not <laughs> tired of Kickstarters yet, go ahead and check out the Academy of Adventures. Um, I am starting up my Kickstarter for summer camp opportunities for kids to learn how to play D&D or play in new big adventures. Uh, and there are also pre-written adventures, family friendly, specifically for new DMs. So if you don't have a kid who needs to head to summer camp, but you want a new adventure, you can check that out as well. Um, that is, uh, yeah, we'll put the link in there. That is the Academy of Adventures summer camp for 2021. Perfect. And of course, you can always follow me on my own Twitch channel, DJ Pirate Rabbits, where I DJ music a few times a week. And sometimes we watch some movies, sometimes we just dance. Um, And uh, with that, I'll say uh, go ahead and uh, put the crock pot on warm and we will see you next time.